Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you? My name is Kasita and I'm happy to be with you today. Well, in this video, we're going to do another practice test for listening. And uh, the reason why I decided to make these videos is because uh, we have very limited resources on the internet for ITEP. So I decided to compile uh, the materials that I have access to to help you prepare for the ITEP test and uh, to practice as many times as you can until you get the score that you need. Uh, you're gonna need headsets and a notebook to take notes throughout the video. Good luck and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Number 1. What did you think of Professor Martin's lecture on the migratory habits of whales? I couldn't keep my eyes open. What does the woman mean? Number 2. Have this month's bills been paid or is that something we need to take care of now? I paid the phone and electricity, but not the credit cards. What does the man mean? Number three. Will you be able to get back from running all your errands by four o'clock? I'll be back as quickly as I can. What does the woman say that she'll do? Number, number four. Have you seen Tim? I really need to talk with him about the phone bill. Well, he was here just a minute ago. What does the woman say about Tim? Listen to a conversation between a student and a university activities coordinator. I understand your problem, but the upper level of the student center isn't available for the time being. But my dance group has a performance coming up. I've been talking with people all day long who are in the exact same situation. There are at least a dozen dance and drama groups on campus, and they're all scrambling for rehearsal space right now. But. I made this reservation last June, before leaving for the summer. No one said anything about construction. That's because no one knew that the remodeling was going to run over into the beginning of the school year. The builders are just way behind schedule. For a while, we weren't even sure that the dining hall on the lower level would be ready for the start of the semester. So, it could have been a lot worse. So when will... The whole upper level will be ready in six weeks. The rehearsal rooms, the game room, the computer center. Six weeks? That's not going to help me. Our performance is in five weeks. Are you part of the program they plan for Parents Weekend? Yeah. The thing is, we're a tap dancing group, and we need to practice on hard floors, preferably wood. We can practice on carpet at first, but it's important for us to be able to hear our feet hit the floor. Interesting. Uh, because of the rhythm, huh? Yeah because the tapping becomes part of the music. So the floors are very important. Exactly. 
And just about everywhere on campus has carpeting. Well, there's always the stage at the student theater. Though it's a long shot, we can look at the schedule. There might be some odd hours free. What about in town? Do you think the university could help us rent a rehearsal space in a commercial dance studio in town, given the situation? That's not really my call. I can reserve rehearsal and performance spaces on campus for you, but、uh, off campus. So who would I talk to? The dance department. Look, let's check the theater schedule first. Why does the student go to see the man? Why is the students' group unable to rehearse in the student center? What two points do the speakers make about tap dancing? What does the man imply about the student theater? Listen to part of a lecture in an astronomy class. Before we continue talking about the properties of individual galaxies, it's worth talking about the distribution of galaxies in space. Efforts at mapping or surveying the universe,、uh, making a sort of atlas of galaxies, have been going on for more than fifty years, and、uh, the creators of the first major map of the universe were the astronomers Harlow Shapley. And Adelaide Ames. In 1932, Shapley and Ames cataloged the positions of 1,250 galaxies by photographing what they saw through their telescopes, and they made an important discovery. Their survey was the first to indicate that galaxies were not distributed uniformly in space. Some areas had a lot of galaxies, and other areas had just a few. Uh, another way of putting this is to say that galaxies are clustered; they're not spread evenly throughout the universe. So we have stars grouped together in galaxies, and galaxies grouped together in clusters. Okay. Now,、uh, after their survey, other astronomers completed surveys that added to the number of clusters cataloged. One of the most important was done by the astronomer George Abel. Abel completed his survey in 1958. It added considerably to the map made by Shapley and Ames. In fact, his map had over 2,700 clusters of galaxies. That's 2,700 clusters of galaxies, not just galaxies. But there's another aspect of Abel's work that makes this map so valuable to astronomers. 
He introduced a classification scheme for the galaxy clusters. Now, uh, surveys completed since ABLES have cataloged additional galaxies and surveyed more of outer space, but no one has improved upon ABLES classification scheme. In fact, the ABLE catalog is used as a starting point for astronomers who study these objects. One of the reasons his scheme has been so widely accepted is because of his sample size. With all the clusters in his sample, he could determine the different characteristics of clusters. And these characteristics formed the basis of his classification scheme. Now, two of the characteristics crucial to his classification were richness and symmetry. So, uh, what did he mean by richness? Well, basically, it refers to the number of galaxies there are within a cluster. Is that the same as density? That's right. Both uh, richness and density refer to the number per area. Rich clusters, or dense clusters, uh, contain a relatively high number of galaxies. And symmetry just refers to its shape? Mm, roughly speaking, yes. Uh, whether the shape of the cluster was the same on the left side is on the right side. So, Abel used categories like that to classify clusters on a scale, from regular to irregular. A regular cluster is sphere-shaped, symmetrical, and most dense in the middle, um, with the greatest number of galaxies concentrated in the middle of the cluster. An irregular cluster might appear to be lopsided, asymmetrical, with a low concentration of galaxies in the center. You're talking about the shape of the cluster, though, not the shape of the galaxies within the cluster. Right. Uh, for example, let's consider the Coma cluster. It's a symmetrical cluster, basically spherical in shape. But the individual galaxies within it are elliptical. They're not spherical or spiral-shaped but the cluster itself shows spherical symmetry. Um, uh, the Virgo cluster, on the other hand, is considered irregular. There's no symmetry to its overall shape, no central concentration of galaxies, but it happens to have both elliptical and spiral galaxies within it. Another question. You were saying how some clusters have more galaxies than others. How many galaxies does a cluster have to have in order to even be a cluster? Good question. Abel's definition of a cluster is this. First, there have to be more than 50 galaxies within a specific amount of space. He said, basically, that clusters have a radius of roughly 2 megaparsecs. And it was just an assumption that all clusters would be about the same size. It's remarkable that it proved to be correct. And this standard cluster radius is known today as the Abel radius. And second, those 50-plus galaxies have to be a certain brightness. Of course, it was a rough estimate, but looking at galaxies' brightness was a good way to distinguish between clusters that were nearby and those that were more distant. What is the main purpose of the lecture? What did Shapley and Ames discover about the universe? Why does the professor emphasize the number of clusters mapped by Abel?
What aspects of clusters did Abel use to classify them? Why does the professor discuss the Coma and Virgo clusters? What is the professor's opinion of Abel's assumption that all clusters are about the same size? 